It's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Professor Dorota Droz. Professor Dorota Droz is head of Pediatric Nephrology and Hypertension Department at the University Medical College in Krakow. Professor Do is going to present the topic Hypertension in Children with Kidney Disease. Professor Droz, please take the floor. First of all, I uh, would like to thank the organizer for inviting me and uh, for giving me this very important uh, topic, especially for uh, pediatric nephrologists like me. So thank you very much and good afternoon to, uh, to everybody. Uh, I hope that my, that you can see my slides. Perfect, yes. 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 Okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would uh, like to share with you that uh, in different kidney diseases, uh, we have uh, hypertension, we can see the hypertension, and uh, the hypertension in kidney diseases, there are the most common reason for secondary forms of uh, uh, hypertension, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. And... Um, in congenital anomalies and glomerulonephritis, as well in polycystic kidney disease and other parenchymal kidney diseases, we have hypertension on the other hand and on the other side, there are also the groups of kidney diseases which develop chronic uh, kidney disease. Um, uh, in this uh, study, we can see that renal causes are really the main uh, the uh, most common causes of secondary uh, form of hypertension in a tertiary pediatric uh, hypertension clinic, um, as well as also another causes like endocrine or neurological uh, causes of uh, chronic hypertension. But what is also very important, uh, kidney diseases are not only responsible for chronic hypertension, but also of acute exacerbation of blood pressure and severe forms of hypertension. As we can see here, the same groups of kidney diseases are responsible of severe hypertension like glomerulonephritis or uh, uropathy or acute uh, renal failure. In this uh, acute um, situation, our children can develop minor symptoms like headache or vomiting, but also life-threatening symptoms uh, like scissors or heart failure, and uh, which are the um, symptoms of hypertensive emergency and require uh, hospitalization uh, in intensive care unit and also intensive uh, uh, treatment. What are the symptoms of severe hypertension in uh, children? Mm, mostly cardiac, uh, like cardiac failure, palpitations, headache, vomiting, acute hypertensive encephalopathy. But we should remember that in rare cases, we could also have cerebrovascular accident. In younger children, poor feeding and failure to thrive are the symptom of acute uh, elevation in uh, blood pressure. Uh, for sure, we rarely see the stroke in childhood, but we should remember that uh, the, the clinical presentation is uh, similar to adults, um, like scissors, like vomiting, but because we are not so afraid of stroke during childhood, the time to diagnosis is longer than uh, in adults, and uh, we mostly expect stroke in children with congenital heart diseases or after trauma. Uh, but we should remember that in secondary forms of glomerulonephritis, like in lupus or in vasculitis, uh, we have also um, uh, such complication. I would like to show you know, our uh, patient. It was a 10 years old uh, girl with vasculitis uh, started six uh, weeks before the peritoneal dialysis. And at this point, at the beginning of dialysis, we have uh, mostly overhydrated children. And because of this um, 
of hypertension, overhydration, and vasculitis, the child developed a, a hypertensive emergency and stroke. So at home, uh, the girl had scissors and blood pressure of 180 over 110. At the admission to our hospital, the blood pressure was uh, 200 over 220. And uh, she developed also visual disturbances. And in MRI, we found the hemorrhagic focus in the occipital lobe. But um, after the treatment, all these symptoms uh, disappeared. Um, the specific group of children with kidney diseases and hypertension is the group of children with chronic kidney disease. Uh, as we can see here in the big group of children with um, chronic kidney disease, uh, even uh, in treated patients with antihypertensive drugs, many of them have elevated blood pressure in the uh, ABPM. And uh, also in children, the children with glomerular and non-glomerular diseases and on antihypertensive are not treated, uh, have uh, elevated blood pressure, have untreated or uncontrolled uh, hypertension. Uh, what, why the hypertension is so common in this group of uh, children? With reduced glomerular mass, we have decreased sodium excretion, which causes sodium retention, uh, overhydration, increased arterial stiffness, but also other pathomechanisms are responsible for elevation in blood pressure. Uh, there is a sympathetic nervous system overactivity, of course, uh, the activation of um, renin angiotensin aldosterone system and uh, endothelial dysfunction, um, which causes increased uh, peripheral, peripheral vasoconstriction and increased systemic uh, blood pressure. Please remember in chronic kidney disease, there is a shift. Uh, towards vasoconstriction caused by the mechanism I have already shown, but also we have um, oxidative stress, chronic um, inflammation, which are responsible for this uh, shift to vasoconstriction and also uh, some um, uremic toxin like asymmetric dimethylarginine. In very important study, the SK trial showed that in children with chronic kidney disease, the intensified uh, hypotensive treatment uh, uh, is, uh, uh, slows the progression of uh, CKD uh, in the group of children with glomerulonephritis and also in the group of children with hypoplasia and dysplasia. The, Primary endpoint was the start of um, end stage uh, kidney disease. So, uh, when the children required renal replacement therapy or decrease in GFR by uh, 50%. So, um, in these children with uh, chronic kidney disease, as the form of secondary uh, hypertension, we should start the treatment with uh, two drugs. And of course, the ACE inhibitor and angiotensin receptor blocker are recommended and also the use of diuretics. So um, here we have the newest guidelines, um, nephrology guidelines from uh, KTGO. But when we check the treatment of patients in this escape trial group, when um, the group of almost 400 uh, children uh, were followed uh, during five years of observation. And of course, all children were treated with uh, Ramipril, but if they needed the combined uh, therapy, uh, we used uh, more commonly calcium channel broker or even beta blocker uh, than uh, diuretics. Uh, probably we should um, focus on the treatment with diuretics in children with advanced uh, chronic uh, uh, kidney disease. This uh, newest recommendation um, suggests also that all children with CKD and 
uh, mean arterial pressure in ABPM consistently above the 50 percentile should be treated. So probably uh, we should treat with nephroprotection much earlier uh, than um, till this time. And another question is, why should we also frequently ABPM in children with CKD? Uh, when we check in this table, uh, the children with chronic kidney disease have more often mask hypertension, nocturnal hypertension, non-dipic status, and also diastolic uh, hypertension. I would like to show an example of our patient a nine-year-old boy on peritoneal dialysis, unfortunately non-compliant um, regarding the fluid restriction. And uh, when we checked this uh, patient in, in the clinic, his blood pressure was the lowest one during the whole day and night because he was after the uh, night dialysis with ultrafiltration. And then um, with uh, this fluid intake, uh, the uh, blood pressure rise till 200 over 120. And the overhydration is the um, main reason of uh, the main me mechanism of uh, hypertension in children on dialysis. That's why in this specific group, we should firstly normalize uh, extracellular volume and of course give the antihypertensive uh, treatment. And in this specific group, when we don't achieve good control of blood pressure, in some cases, uh, we should consider nephrectomy before transplantation to treat the refractory um, uh, hypertension. Uh, the mast hypertension, so common in uh, children with chronic uh, kidney disease, is also um, connected with higher risk of left ventricular hypertrophy, and as we can uh, see the, in the group of children with CKD, um, children with mask hypertension had higher um, you know, prevalence of left ventricular uh, hypertrophy, which is a, a very common uh, cardiovascular risk factor and a target organ uh, damage uh, in CKD. Uh, this is uh, probably the most known uh, picture in nephrology uh, showing uh, a very high cardiovascular mortality risk in patients on dialysis. And the biggest difference is in young adults. Mm, uh, why we should care about this? Because most of them uh, started the dialysis uh, during uh, childhood. And um, in our patient with uh, chronic, oh, sorry, uh, kidney disease, there are many different uh, risk factors. The traditional one, like hypertension, dyslipidemia, anemia, uh, but also many uh, risk factors connected with uh, kidney disease. Uh, like um, overhydration, oxidative stress, and uh, hyperphosphatemia connected with increased uh, calcific arterial calcification and stiffness, and also uh, uh, many children with CKD have uh, target organ damage, uh, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, and uh, alter mechanism and also diastolic uh, dysfunction. Uh, this group uh, has not only the hypertension as an important uh, risk factor, as we can see here, um, some of them uh, have also obesity and especially in this group with obesity and CKD, uh, uh, the hypertension is most prevalent uh, with the prevalence of more than 60%. Dyslipidemia, 56%, and even abnormal glucose uh, metabolism. In children with CKD, uh, in comparison with children with uh, primary hypertension, the cardiac, the concentric hypertrophy is much more uh, common. So, um, uh, this uh, 
cardiovascular risk in children with CKD is very high, is the highest in the pediatric um, population. That's why the aggressive uh, therapy of modifiable risk factors like hypertension is essential to enable long-term survival of uh, our patient. Um, in conclusion, um, I would like to point out that um, kidney diseases are the leading cause of secondary and severe form of hypertension in childhood. ABPM should be performed in children with CKD on a regular basis in order to detect hypertension and to monitor the therapy. The results of ESCAPE trial showed that targeting the blood pressure control to the low normal range is associated with slowing the progression of CKD in children. And children with CKD are at high risk of cardiovascular events and the preventive strategies should be started early in the course of renal disease. Thank you very much for your attention.